Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Lagrange multipliers. Now, I'm going to split this up into a two-part series because in part one, what I want to do is a problem that has an ideal situation. However, not all problems work out so nicely and ideally. And so I also want to break it up into two so I can show you what to do algebraically for those two situations. Now, what's going to happen is they're going to tell you to optimize, either maximize or minimize, some f of x, y, z, some function, and they'll give you a constraint. They'll say subject to, and they'll give you a function equal to some constant k. So you want to maximize or minimize this subject to some constraint. What you're going to do, your setup is actually very easy. The calculus is very easy. What's going to be hard about Lagrange is simply the algebra. All you need to do is you're going to take the partial derivative of f with respect to x minus lambda times gx. You do the same thing with y and z and however many variables you have. And then you end this by stating the constraint, your g of x, y, z equal to k. What you're going to do here is you're going to have a system of equations. Notice how you have four equations, and you're going to have four unknowns. Your unknowns are x, y, z, and lambda. Lambda, by the way, is your Lagrange multiplier, just as a heads up. Okay. So, really, this is an algebra problem. Okay. After you set this up, there's no more calculus. You need to do algebra solve for x, y, z, and lambda. Now, ideally... Ideally, which is going to be this problem right here, you want to put x in terms of lambda, y in terms of lambda, z in terms of lambda, and you'll plug that into that constraint to solve for lambda, because once you solve for lambda, you can solve for x, y, and z. Let's go ahead and do an example so you can see how that works. So taking a look at this, it says both to maximize and minimize the following function, x plus y plus 2z, subject to this given constraint, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 3. Okay, so this right here is my f, and this right here is my g equals k. And so, what I need to do is I need to find fx, fx is 1, minus lambda times gx, gx is going to be times 2x. And we're going to set that equal to 0. Okay, then fy, that's 1, minus lambda times gy, gy is 2y, we're going to set that equal to 0. Finally, fz, that's 2, minus lambda times gz, that's going to be 2z, we're going to set that equal to 0. And then finally, in your last line, you're going to restate your constraints. You're going to restate that x squared plus y squared plus z squared needs to equal 3. Okay, as I mentioned before, ideally we want to put x, y, and z in terms of lambda, and I can do that with this problem. By doing a little bit of algebra here, 1 is equal to 2 lambda x, and so I know that x is equal to 1 over 2 lambda. Okay, likewise 1 is equal to 2 lambda y, and so y is also 1 over 2 lambda. And then finally here with the z, 2 is equal to 2 lambda z, and so z is equal to 1 over lambda. If you can do that, if you can put each of the variables in terms of lambda, do that. Because now that I know what x, y, and z is, I can plug this into my constraint in order to solve for lambda. And so x squared is 1 over 4 lambda squared, y squared that's also 1 over 4 lambda squared, and z squared, z squared is 1 over lambda squared, and that's equal to 3. Here, if I want to get a common denominator of 4 lambda squared, I just got to multiply this fraction right here by a 4 over 4. That way I can just add all the way across, and so 1 plus 1 plus 4 is 6, and then your common denominator is 4 lambda squared, is equal to 3, and now we just got to do a little bit of algebra in order to, to um, solve for lambda. And so multiply that over, uh, 6 over 4 reduces to 3 over 2, is equal to 3 lambda squared. By dividing that 3, 
I get that 1 half is equal to lambda squared. And so when I take the square root, lambda is both plus and minus the square root of 1 half. Okay, whenever you take the square root, it's both plus and minus. And they told us to maximize and minimize, okay? So now that I have lambda is plus and minus square root of one half, let's figure out what x, y, and z are. But let's first do it at lambda equals positive. Um, and square root of one half is just one over square root of two, just as a heads up. And you take the square root of one is one, square root of two is well square root of two. So let's first check at lambda is positive 1 over root 2. And so your x would be 1 over 2 times 1 over root 2, which whenever you divide by a fraction, because here this is going to be 2 over root 2, it's the same thing as multiplying by that fraction flipped. And so x is square root of 2 over 2. y, likewise, because it's also 1 over 2 lambda, is also square root of 2 over 2. And then z, z is 1 over lambda, and lambda is 1 over root 2, which, like I said, whenever you divide by a fraction, just multiply the by that fraction flipped, and that's square root of 2. And so therefore, f of that x, y, z is equal to um, f of square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and square root of 2. And so what we're going to do to find the actual value are plug these points into here. And so x is square root of 2 over 2 plus y, or the y, it's also square root of 2 over 2, plus 2 times z. So it's going to be 2 times z. z is square root of 2. And so whenever you add all that together, square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2 is just square root of 2, and then plus this, that's going to be 3 square root of 2. And so, what we have is we have an absolute maximum at the point square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and square root of 2. Okay, that's your x, y, and z point. So it's at that point, and it is the value of 3 square root of 2. So your absolute maximum is at the following point, and your absolute maximum value, um, it has a maximum value of 3 root 2. And then whenever I do at lambda equals negative 1 over root 2, right, because I had both a positive and a negative. The reason I already know this is going to be a max, whenever this is a negative, everything's going to be exactly the same except that it's going to be negative. Your x is going to be negative root 2 over 2 y is going to be negative root 2 over 2, and z is going to be negative root 2, because it's the exact same value, except that it's negative rather than positive. And then for your value, your f of x, y, z, that's just going to be negative 3 root 2. And so that's how I know that this was a minimum, because it's going to be the exact same thing as this, except negative. And so, you have an absolute minimum. You have an absolute minimum at the point negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2, and negative square root of 2. And it's an absolute minimum value of negative 3 root 2. Okay, so it's absolute minimum then. And that's it. So ideally, if it works out nicely, Lagrange multipliers ain't too bad. Because once you set up the system of equations, if you could put x in terms of lambda, y in terms of lambda, z in terms of lambda, all you gotta do is throw that into your constraint, solve for lambda, and then throw it back into here to find x, y, and z. However, join me in the second video, because what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna show you what if you can't do that? What if that's impossible? I'll show you how to deal with that.